Hey everyone, this is Martin from HowToMakeMobileGames.com on January the 20th, 2016. Uh, I think I might have said 2015 last time, but yeah, 2016 anyway, uh, and it is a Wednesday evening here in Shanghai, China. Freezing cold week, and uh, my uh, SAD is in full gear, my season affective disorder, where you get depressed when it's dark and cold outside. Oh, I think uh, a lot of people in England get this, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to sort of like springtime again here and anywhere so uh, eventually we're gonna have to move down south somewhere to get better weather um but anyway this video is uh, a response video to one of the posts that i did i'm just doing a bunch of response videos uh to questions and give answers on the how to make mobile games.com forum and i'll i'll set i'll split these up and i'll probably get a few done tonight so uh, yeah, that's what this is and this response video is to one that I did on the developer diary section So those of you who might not know the developer diary section is a section of the uh, How to make mobile games.com forum where developers can share their experiences uh, Of the games that they develop so talking about you know how the development process went uh, how the statistics are, the revenue. So if you've not gone there, check it out. It's a lot of really good information, like marketing, what worked, what didn't work. Uh, and you can post your games on there and share the links. So it's also a little bit of promotion. Uh, but if you do post on that section, guys, uh, it is, uh, you know, don't just post your screenshots and a link. No, like explain a little bit about the game, like how you developed it or the revenue or something that developers will find useful and interesting. Uh, so this was the one that I posted about Build Your World. Uh, this is a, uh, a world creation game, so it uh, basically allows you to place objects in this, in like a sandbox environment, uh, place terrains, uh, add a start position for your player, an end position, uh, death objects that you have to avoid, and it flips you, you switch between an editor mode that you can see here uh, on, the, on your screen, and then a game mode, which would be uh, a play mode, sorry, which would be this one down here. Uh, which is a first-person perspective with like standard first-person controls like jump, swipe to turn, and then the left thumbstick to walk around. So uh, that's pretty much what it is, and it's, we're building on it for a while. So I posted here and I wanted to get some feedback. So uh, that's actually the first level that I created in this game. Uh, and by the way, you can find the link for it there if you just click on uh, the... Uh, where is it? Uh, if I can find it. Um, I did post a link somewhere. <laughs> somewhere i'll probably find it in a bit but it's called build your world uh and it's on uh, go there we go it's on google and it's also on amazon and you can read about that but guys thanks for the response uh, uh guy has you said when i looked on the screenshots all i thought about is that it would be super cool if you can make some real character building with blocks uh, on existing human like stickman template so the players will create their identity in the game and create some ai followers uh, that will follow the player if a certain range has passed, and will shoot on, uh, and will shoot on the same target as uh, the player shoot. Uh, you can later on make huge things with that mechanism, like setting guilds and more with more complicated, but step at a time. Yeah, and it can be done. Yeah, definitely. the The goal with this one is to to build it up. We for this game, we we've actually been doing this for a few months now, uh, on and off. Really, it's not been uh, full time. Uh, development on this one but it is the biggest most complicated game and when I say complicated I mean it's like got the most features and for us it's it's because it's a sandbox level creation game with user generated content it's the type of game that players will spend a lot more time in so uh, I've thought a lot about you know having a AI and uh, like FPS shooter controls uh, character customization all this stuff so yeah it's a good suggestion definitely because these are the kind of feedback things that we want to know as well. Like, do people like this, or you know, are they looking for characters or build? Do people want to build their own buildings or their own prefabs or their own characters? This sort of stuff, uh, and it's actually what we're kind of doing on our uh, very similar to what we're doing on our new VR game now for Oculus um, that we're aiming to release on the Oculus PC platform. So this is great feedback. So thank you, guy Hazzy. I think uh, there you go. So. Or it's, Oh, let this page slowly load and then I'll come back to it. Uh, MZR, dude, hope you're well, man. Uh, I tried the game briefly and I couldn't really make it work. It might have been the fact that I tried adding a terrain, but the player either kept falling down into nothingness or got stuck when I started the game. 
Uh, yeah, okay, so I think what happened maybe is you had the, uh, the player collider here and then the floor intersected with the player collider because if you place the player collider first or the player position and then the terrain on top of it, it might have been uh, intersecting it and then he's either because of the collider has pushed him down and he's fallen through the world or uh, has just got you stuck or sometimes it makes you jump up so I think that's the problem yeah something that we'll have to fix as well uh, but if you just if you just highlight the character then move him up above any collide any collider away from any collider then that'll stop him from falling through uh, but of course that's something that we have to do as well uh, and, and make an easier way to do that also I suggest making the starting position bigger uh, so that you can see it from far away or give the option uh, to go to starting position cool idea though yeah I agree like for example there is a zoom button if you select an object in the scene and then click the uh, the eye at the bottom right of the of the menu then it goes to that object and it's kind of like the I think it's the F key in, uh, in unity or 3d max and it will zoom into that particular object uh, but we need an option where you find the starting position I think that'd be very useful because there has been times where I've built a big map because the world is actually quite large. It's like a 500 meter square by 500 meters, uh, you know, so 500 meter square. And um, yeah, sometimes I just can't find the, where I did the start position. So that's that's a that's a good suggestion for sure. Um, and then you said again, okay, so I like, so I thought the issue was the terrain placement. Uh, I was able to create something and play it after I figured it out. The gameplay controls feel nice. I like the way you handled looking around the world. Did you use some assets for controlling inputs slash character? Uh, cool, great. So uh, I thought I, liked the, uh, I thought the issue was that I was able to create some of them. Okay, cool. So um, yeah, so terrain placement might have been the problem. Uh, cool that you were able to play it. That's great to know. It needs to be a lot easier for people to, to create something and understand it, though. I need to do some tutorial videos on this eventually. Uh, but actually getting developer feedback is a lot better because you guys... Uh, it's easier to um, to get feedback this way and know what we're doing right or what we're doing wrong with it. Um, uh, the gameplay feels nice, so that's good. Yeah, I agree. I think the controls, the first-person shooter feel uh, uh, controls are pretty good. Um, handled look around the world. Did you use some asset controlling input character? Uh, good question. I don't know. Um, some assets for turning the character and making him jump I don't think so I think that might have just been handled by ourselves using uh, like a standard character controller with the FPS controls the standard assets that you get in unity uh, they have their on-screen controls but we actually have a swipe so you swipe the screen with your right thumb to turn the player and use your left thumb stick to walk him backwards forwards left and right and then there's a right button is jump on the bottom right of the screen as well I don't know how we did it sorry this was our, our developer handled this one uh, code wise so sorry I can't answer that question uh, Jake said hello Martin just a bird's eye view regarding this game uh, Steam has quite has quite a few open world slash building games on the most played list quickly glancing at Panny I get the impression that similar games are not popular on handheld devices uh, this is probably a lot to do with the limited screen space and simplicity of the fingertip controls. Yeah, I agree. Uh, it's one of the issues with our game is actually uh, because it is a small screen. It's actually quite difficult. Sometimes it can be difficult to grab objects or just try and get your finger to hold onto the um, like the axis tool in the game. Uh, and then also FPS controls, in my opinion, are never very good or not as good as like real keyboard and mouse controls or like actual controller pad controls so that's one of the problems as well um, so yeah that, that's that's one of the reasons on iPad it might be better but I've not actually played the game on iPad so um, if anyone has a large Android tablet because we don't have it on iOS right now let me know if you found it okay the other question is did anybody have any trouble tapping the buttons because we've had some input problems as well so if anyone found that issue, then please let me know. Um, idea is great. Keep investing time in it, and after some time, it might finally become an overnight sensation, as they say. Uh, as it currently stands, it seems to be open-ended. Um, didn't know how sh uh, should I use it. Yeah, uh, we need to invest more time in this one. I keep on thinking about this game and, and building more of the creator apps or creator games. Um, you know sandbox games and I think we need to continue to build on this one and at least give it a chance to uh, see where it can go and, and just keep adding a little bit to it 
recently we added the ability to import levels from other players, but the way that you import levels from other players is still not very intuitive or easy at all. Uh, we need to have like an online uh, level browser like they do in, um, what's the game, uh, uh, Geometry Dash. Um, so it needs to be a lot better, but I agree, We need this one, since it's such a big project and it's so much potential, we need to keep on building on it just just a little bit you know every week just focusing on some extra features or tasks or cleaning up bugs so that we can at least start to get some idea of of um what people like doing in it and then as you said as well it's too open-ended right now we need to make it clear that hey this is a level building a level building game is your main goal in this to at least give the player some direction and that's what we did in our vr game as well we've started to give the player the ability to create levels with a start position and end position and uh, death zones as well so players have to avoid those areas you know and, and uh, jump over the spikes or whatever it may be to get to the end point so there's a clear goal for the creation process and there's a clear gameplay goal as well but you don't have to do those you can just create anything like in build your world here you can create houses or trees or forests whatever you want to build um, and just do that, just play around in it, and then share it with people. So, uh, But yeah, it do, we do need to have a starting point where it's got a clear direction. Directionless games or apps uh, are always a problem, I think. You need to not tell people what to do, especially in a complicated game like this. Um, so maybe you should consider making it more focused on actual city building. Now SimCity is basically the oldie building simulation one can find on the top 100 list uh, when looking into app stores. That could be a fairly profitable market to tap into as only a few games in my search result turned out to be real city simulations. A hugely successful megapolis, or megapolis, yeah. For example, it's just a simple tap buildings for money and use the money to buy more buildings to place your land with excellent graphics and real world buildings. Yeah, so that other that's the other game feature that we were also thinking about as well. Is having some kind of currency system whereby you can build more, uh, you can acquire more assets. So let's say, for example, um, there's a bunch of free assets in the game, like buildings, trees, blocks, uh, cars, roads, whatever. There's a bunch of free assets, like standard assets in Unity. Uh, and then, but you want to get some extra cool assets, like say like fire or uh, like this building or this uh, this bl particular block or whatever it may be, like a bunch, a set of assets. And in order to get that, there's some kind of currency, like you have to build levels or you have to spend enough time in the game. The more time that you spend in the game, your currency counter just clicks up. Uh, or it could be that you buy an in-app purchase for a thousand coins or something like that, or credits, whatever it may be. So yeah, we need some kind of monetization system. We did talk about that a while over the past few months, because really this game is, we've been working on this for months and months now, like I said, on and off. Uh, but we did talk about how to do that. What we want to do first though is really make the gameplay the main... Um, gameplay interaction more clear uh, much more intuitive uh, the ability to create and save and uh, distribute levels like either to friends or on an online server is is we need to nail that one first because without that no one's going to stick around long enough to actually do any in that purchases or want to buy anything uh, but definitely i think the the city building and have is some kind of like either simulation or some kind of um uh, monetization or reward for building things and to buy extra things is definitely a good idea for sure um, especially with this type of game but we'll see this is I don't think Minecraft does this I don't think I, I don't play I've only seen a little bit of Minecraft to be honest but I don't know if you could I don't think they have in-app purchases I don't think there's a way for you to buy like special blocks or something like that uh, but in our game that's what we're thinking of doing uh, then again you have Minecraft as we just spoke about path and you can create an open-ended world for builder enthusiasts. Uh, apocalyptic wasteland worlds seem very popular at the moment. Uh, they only can modify terrain and build, as well as salvage some simple things and make life more secure. Yeah, so like you said, Minecraft have it more open-ended. So basically, that's kind of what we've got now is like an open-ended game. Um, it is blocky, so immediately everybody thinks about Minecraft. But the, what we want to do is add in some prefab models in there as well probably connected to some kind of server system uh, and say oh you want the Lamborghini okay well it's not in the APK file or the IPA file but it can be downloaded from a server that's a massive undertaking for this project right now um, 
since we started to focus more on VR, I I don't know if this could be made into VR or not, or uh, and we've got a second world builder game on VR. I'm not sure. Or is it going to be ported onto PC, or uh, is it just going to be on mobile? I don't know yet. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, Minecraft is like the the thing that people think. But I, I re like I said, if if we find some traction with this initial version of it, if, if this initial good version of it, you know, where it's intuitive and simple and people understand it, and and we see some stickiness to it, then definitely investing in like some kind of like. Uh, server-side functionality to share levels easily to get more content easily is, is something that we can start to focus on that really needs to be integrated because right now the ability to save levels to uh, send that level to a friend is very very difficult you've got to find the level on the device through all of the folders on the SD card and then go into the Android folder and all this and then you've got to send it to somebody and then they've got to click on the input file input to uh, input game sorry input level button and then again locate the file in their uh, in their uh, folder structure wherever it is on their device and then save it to a game slot and that game saving slot needs to be uh, more intuitive as well so there's a lot of steps um, but it is uh, honestly even though it's 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 not there at the moment as in like a good polished version one or anything I still think this game has a lot of a potential it's a lot lot different to anything that we've done before because it is user generated content it is very open world uh, and we've got a lot of mixed reviews on it so far like some people like it some people hate it I don't think anybody out there has built a level yet so uh, this is another reason I wanted to do this video is because I did this post uh, basically guys if you do go to find there you go oh it just doesn't load it's called build your world 3d craft that's the full name okay on on uh, Google Play uh, it's also on Amazon as well, that's the icon. Uh, if you do go on there, uh, check out this post, okay? It's the um, Developer Diaries uh, section on howtomakemobilegames.com and Build Your World Sandbox Game. I built this level down here. This is a very basic level, really, really simple. It's got a start position and end position. Uh, I added the logic and this red area on the bottom is the death zone. So if you touch it, you die and you have to go back. Uh, the, and I gave a Dropbox link there as well, so you have to import it. So if anybody out there is interested um, you know, in playing my level, check it out because I'd love to get the feedback on was it worth it, uh, was it was it easy, did you understand it, and, and was it fun to, to do that and play the level. Uh, it'd be great to get some feedback. And then also, if you guys do a level, please post it on here as well on this thread, and I'll definitely play it because so far... It's just not been easy at all. That's the problem with this such a big barrier to users building a level and then sharing the level that we've never uh, shared a level. This, I'm the first person to share the level, honestly, and it's been live for a few months now or a couple of months. So um, that's uh, that's it has to be so much easier to do that. Uh, the online functionality is the next big step as well after I've gotten a little bit more feedback and figured out what the main uh polished features are going to be for the creation process and the play mode as well so uh, but yeah guys if you do I'm, I'm watching this thread so definitely post your level on here you can check the first uh, the first thread that I did I've done a couple of like screenshots there and uh, if you want my uh, <laughs> if you want my Mario level I can send that to you as well for sure so but anyway guys more videos coming soon. I'm just doing a bunch of answers videos. Uh, uh, hopefully I'll get some more done tonight uh, because you guys are awesome. Thank you for sharing. Uh, thank you for checking out and supporting howtomakemobilegames.com. Uh, and if you haven't, then you know definitely come on here and uh, post your game on the developer diary section as well. Uh, it's just good exposure for your games and it's great to get some feedback like I've done on here as well uh, for the Build Your World game. Uh, the developer diary section, like I say, if you do post, don't just share your screenshots and a link. Make sure you share about the game process, uh, development process, sorry. Any revenue, maybe, or uh, reviews or marketing things, something that other people will find really useful. And uh, you'll definitely get some response because the guys in there are awesome. So, anyway, big thumbs up to you all. Thanks so much for the support. And more videos coming really soon. See you later. Happy developing.